So late Friday afternoon, 343 uploaded a blog detailing all the stuff that's going to be part of the first drop pod coming next week for Halo Infinite. Though first, I want to say if you're watching this video right now, as soon as it's uploaded, I'm currently live streaming on my Twitch channel down below, link in the pinned comment, where we're doing a watch party of the Xbox Bethesda showcase here, guys, at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Hopefully we get some Halo Infinite news. If we do, you know I'll share it here on the channel. But what's better than catching the news when it happens here on this channel, guys? Catching it live as soon as it happens on my Twitch channel, guys. Make sure I give a follow there, and I'll hope to see you on the live stream. But make sure you stay tuned throughout this video to get all the details, though. Now, within this first drop pod, there really isn't, like, a whole lot being fixed. This isn't, like, a huge game change kind of thing it's a lot of like quality of life improvement kind of stuff so it's just kind of not a whole lot so we'll just go into each detail and we'll just skim through it real quickly and then we'll get the thoughts later on in this video i love this first change on the accessibility right here saying in game text window now consistently show the latest message received which is fantastic also various issues tied to user interface narration options in the accessibility tab of the settings menu has now been resolved which is great under the menus, which we're actually getting some optimization here, saying new menu optimization results in faster load times of the battle pass challenges and shop pages. The improvement should be more noticeable on low spec hardware. So like your Xbox ones, your low end PCs and things like that. Nothing about the customization though, but maybe that's kind of tied in with it, but whatever. Saying the, uh, the load screen has now been updated to feature Season 2 Lone Wolves key art, which will replace the Zeta Halo Ravine image, which it's actually a set of images, but most people get past that first image pretty quickly. Addressed an issue that prevented unlocked event pass rewards from appearing in the post-match reward screen. I was coming across this issue quite often during the interference event, especially. Fixed a bug that showed rewards as locked in the event pass when they were unlocked. I never came across this. Sandbox and multiplayer changes right here as well, saying the durability of light vehicles such as the Banshee, Margus, and Wasps, and medium vehicles like Warhog, Chopper, Ghost, and the Shade, that gives me the turret, uh, have been slightly increased to foster better vehicle play, so it should be a little bit more sturdy for you guys out there. The Scorpion tank's controls have been adjusted to feel more intuitive, which, I mean, I think it was fine previously, but I guess so. The volume of the Disruptor's Super Combine has been reduced to be heard from a distance, which is an issue that result in uh, repeating visual effects and sound effects of like grenades and explosions has been resolved. I've seen this all over over Twitter. I haven't seen it personally, but glad to see that it's been fixed. And also a big one, an issue where players could be pinged through walls has been resolved as well. I saw that come up on Twitter recently, but it's been picked up. Performance and stability improvements. Here's saying Xbox One stability has been improved to reduce instances of players not entering the matchmaking games. Also, all changes to target frame rate in the settings tab are now reflected in in-game for the Xbox Series S and X users. We have major changes coming to the ranked play as well for Halo Infinite, where now new accounts will be needed to complete 25 social matches before they can queue in the rank. This is one way to help out on cheaters. I know other games have implemented this. It has worked out very well for them on top of that. Also, a very interesting change here that fire team members will be within a certain range of each other's CSR rank. So your rank that you see within your rank play actually matters now. It actually takes into effect of the matchmaking, which is fantastic. This is certainly a step in the right direction, but some people are saying it's not enough right here. So the CSR range is applied based off of highest skilled player in the fire team, and it works like this. For 899 CSR, so a gold six and lower, there are no restrictions. You can match with anybody out there. At 900 platinum one, a limit of 900 is introduced. And basically it's kind of like a scale, right? For so basically the way they say that, that the higher rank you are, the tighter this gap gets down to, gets as low as 600 CSR when it comes to the gap between the highest skilled player and the lowest skilled player that you'll have in a lobby. And they provide an example here saying a 1500 CSR and above will have a limit of 600 CSR, where if you're an Onyx 1700, the lowest CSR in the party that could be possibly matching with or match against would be 1100 Platinum 5. So this will hopefully help out bring a little bit more even play when it comes to these matches and also hopefully avoid like any kind of boosting or something like that. But they did say that unranked players can only fire team with other not yet qualified players and with qualified players up to 899 CSR, AKA a gold six. So now I'm sure some people are hearing this like, wait, so if you're like a high ranking guy, you can't match going to rank with like friends who are much lower rank. That sounds about right. But the thing is, 
if you're going into ranked game gameplay guys and you're like a 1700 onyx very unlikely you're willing to jump in and play with people who are like platinum level players because that's just going to be a huge drag on you trying to get wins obviously there's going to be people out there who are 1700 csr and you know their friend might be a platinum four and they can't play with them something like that might just happen but the odds of that happening and the frequency of that happening isn't really that much at least from my instance and my experience and for all my friends who have noticed that like yeah you don't really see this happen too often before three also mentioned that they wanted to start out with a looser sign of this csr taking into account of matchmaking because obviously they want to see implementing this first on a looser end of things and if they can tighten it up from there which is much easier to do rather than starting out strict and you have a whole bunch of problems of like why this could happen in certain situations i just hope that with multiple drop pods that we just see in continual improvements with the rank system here like monthly updates hopefully when it comes to making the ranked experience a much better time though the biggest issue they did not address within this one is that a lot of people know that slaying out is the best way to rank up in a game basically you need to improve your kill death ratio if you actually want to rank up it doesn't really help winning games it helps winning games and doing well stat wise obviously you want to take into consideration personal performance when it comes to skill level of a player but there is a certain point where like getting the win should really make a big difference and i from my experience whenever i'm winning games i'm basically breaking even in kd which would make sense right if the skill based matchmaking is working properly that if i'm going like 15 and 15 with like 10 assists or something like that and i get a win but i get like two csr it's just really demoralizing i'm not feel like i'm making any progress i'm not getting rewarded for that win again this is a process i would never expect something that complicated like a rank system be fixed overnight with a single drop this is a continuous process we'll keep up to date on this channel we'll see what happens right there i like seeing the durability increase when it came to a lot of the vehicles within halo infinite because they still feel a bit underpowered especially that banshee man that banshee is not the banshee that i know and love especially from halo reach Ooh. That Banshee was good. I'm also really glad that they were able to optimize the load times when it comes to the battle pass challenges and shop pages. This was one of my biggest concerns before Halo Infinite release, right? Where you're constantly adding new content into the game, bloating the size of the game, and if people buy anything, that, that, heart, that content needs to stay in the game for it to load properly, and so everyone has to have it on their system. Now, I was worried that over time, that like load times for especially like the challenges, battle passes, and uh, the shop pages would just increase so much that it would just take forever to load. It didn't mention anything about the customization pages, which just take just as much time as those other pages, but hopefully this might be a vicarious fix when it comes to the challenges and the also the customization pages, loading in proper time, but we just have to wait and see when this comes out. And honestly, one of my favorite fixes within this one is that the in-game text chat will now consistently show the latest message rather than like the first message you see. I found this so annoying and like, it, you know, oftentimes like you just need to read something in the upper right hand corner rather than like pressing J, opening it up and see what they said. Like it completely takes you out of the game or oftentimes it's just like a quick little thing they wanted to say to everybody. And for a drop pod, this is kind of what I expected. It just mainly just changes and fixes and quality of life changes what they've mentioned previously in that live stream that they had back in April. That's kind of the idea of these drop pods and not really meant to like be huge game changing experiences, especially since they're once a month, they're gonna be dropping some new content or new updates for us. Hopefully this update goes without a hitch like season two Two's update but well, we'll see what happens right there they said this will drop next week not an exact time was given but my assumption would be tuesday at 10 a.m pacific standard time like when the update does happen for halo infinite and the weekly update schedule so that's when i would expect to see this drop pod go live if you want some more halo content click the pinned comment down below guys to the twitch page we are streaming right now we are going to be doing a watch party of the xbox but there's a showcase crossing our fingers for some Halo content. If you want to know what we're talking about when it comes to Halo content for this update, what to expect, check out my previous video, guys, talking about all what we can expect for that showcase. If you guys want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure to check out some other content on the channel if you're new here as well. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.